bandwidth for This Week in Startups provided by liquidweb.com. Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by Walker Corporate Law, a boutique corporate law firm specializing in the representation of entrepreneurs, and by MailChimp. Manage lists with up to 2,000 subscribers and send 12,000 emails per month for free with MailChimp. That's what it's all about, man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Hey everybody, it's Jason Calacanis So This Week in Startups, I'm here with Scott Walker, uh, who is the CEO and founder of the Walker Corporate Law Group. Welcome back to the hey, program. Great to be here, Jason. Uh, let's take another one of these critical issues uh, when you're starting a company, intellectual property, right. IP law. This includes everything from trademarks to mm. patents to copyright, lots of different uh, words. But typically it goes down something like this, and I get approached by these as an angel investor. I have an idea that I've been working on on the weekends right. while I'm working at IBM, exactly. Google, Microsoft, <laughs> and I want you to invest in it. Right. And now I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. Were you doing this on company time? Were you using the company laptop? Who owns this right. IP? Right. Is the IP clean? Uh, what do founders need to know uh, in this type of situation? How do they get themselves um, angel ready, fundable? when they, the IP was maybe created on the weekend? Yeah, no, that's a great question. There are certain mistakes that are deadly, and IP is certainly one of them. We talked about vesting uh, previously. IP ownership, and, and the sad thing is, Jason, as you know, it comes up when the investors come in yep. and do their diligence, and it's like, what, what the f is going on here? You were working over at uh, you know, yep. IBM, like you said, and doing right. this. So the, the answer is, you gotta sit down with a good lawyer, and it's sort of like a checklist of IP ownership issues that we need to walk through and address. Right. And it may very well be okay. You know, if you're not, for example, in California, if you're not using their facilities, if you're truly moonlighting and you're doing it on the weekend and mm. it's not in their space, then you may be okay. But I mean, there were some tricky issues in there. We got to make sure right. that. The, and know, it's like little tests right. that add up That's right. to the other party having a case or not. Right. And this is what I That's think right. confuses a lot of young entrepreneurs is that it's not black and white. Right. There's interpretation to the law. Right. Exactly. And sometimes you have a good relationship with your employee. You might be able to get a waiver. You know, right. It's like, hey, here's what, what I'm is doing. a waiver. A waiver is basically uh, the employer saying to you, you know, Jason, the entrepreneur, you, you know, it, it's murky. We may have ownership rights to your IP, but we're going to waive those rights. We're going to let you go ahead and do your venture. Yeah. We love you. Maybe we'll take a little equity. Maybe give us one, whatever it is, but we're not going to cause any problems. You can bring that waiver to your investor and say everything's cool. And I've had this happen multiple times here at Mahalo. I've had people say, I'm working on this project on the sure. weekend. Right. Would you sign a waiver for me? Yeah. And then I say, hmm, <laughs> do I like this employee or not? This is why it's important to be good to your boss. <laughs> right. I usually think, you know, and people sometimes ask, can I work on this? And they, they do it ahead of time. They yeah. even do a waiver ahead of time yeah. so they don't get in any trouble. Right. I'm thinking of working on this project. Right. Will you sign a waiver? Right. And Or I've been working on a project. Will you sign a waiver? And most bosses will be reasonable. If they're not, you really shouldn't work for that kind of boss That's right. anyway. That's and right. you need to get out of there. Um, well, these are great issues. And of course, your firm is a boutique firm, which means you don't charge huge fees. You got that $2,500 all you can eat, uh, all the questions and emails. Uh, startup package that's yeah, I think working it's, out pretty well I think for it's people. Twenty nine hundred, yeah. It's um, so in all filing fees includes you pay about nine hundred bucks filing fees. You form a corporation in Delaware. You qualify where you're located, usually California. Ah. And there's a whole bunch of documents that we you take do care that of. for twenty nine hundred bucks. With yeah, everything just, is just uh, you lose money on that. Well, it's I guess. just it's a way of you know who gave me the idea? Nivy at uh, Angel uh, List. Uh, oh, Angel. really? Yeah. He said lose money on the formation, but like make freemium, it back. Right, build a relationship. Freemium, yeah. Yeah, don't make it free because then you get a lot of kind of you know oddball screwballs. Yeah, they gotta have a little bit of skin in the game. 
right. So they right. So so they actually are committed, right? right. It's kind of a little test, and right. um, yeah, it's really a great way of building relationship. It's uh, obviously there are a lot of questions first times entrepreneurs have. Yeah. They're afraid to pick up the phone and call the lawyer because the guy's always billing. Right. This way, it's like call us. We want to yeah. help you. You know, let's right. button down these. And issues. you're you're investing in them for the long term because exactly. if they become hey, they get to right. be around there, see around, it can become a meaningful client for you guys. Yeah, and that's what we want. Our, what we're trying to do is help entrepreneurs. Right. There are a lot of unfortunately bad guys out there. You know, right. at your level and the level of you know the Brad Fells and the Mark Seusses, you guys are amazing, right? right? Trust, you know, it's not an issue. You probably don't even need a lawyer. But when you get down in the second and third tier, unfortunately, there's some bad guys out there. Yeah, well, you have these, uh, yeah, all kinds of weird operators weird. who want to take take advantage 5% of, entre- of your right, whatever. They want to, you want you to hire them to raise money for you, and that's right. like five percent warrants or ten percent. They just totally destroy these like weird characters, right. and you do need to have a lawyer to protect you before you sign anything. Exactly. Anything you're going to sign, you got to show to your lawyer first. Hey, Scott's a great walker. If you're a startup company, I highly recommend you hire him. Uh, and you can reach him at swalker at walkercorporatelaw.com. Yeah. Swalker at walkercorporatelaw.com. You should just get Scott. All right. I, <laughs> I need, think you're you know, right. I'm wearing the tie over here, and you're nice and casual. <laughs> just get Scott at Walker Corporate right. Law. I got to right. switch that. Well, let's get on with the show. Uh, we are Launchpad Toys, and we're building digital Legos, uh, kind of tools and, and toys that enable parents and kids to create their own stories together. Uh, sort of similar in philosophy to what David uh, Scipio was talking about earlier, uh, but without all the plastic, and we do it for touch screens instead. Uh, we like to think of them as toys and tools that empower kids to create and learn and share their ideas with friends and family all around the world through play, much like you might play with Legos or action figures or dolls or something like that as a kid. Uh, and kids at heart, too, not just kids. Our first app, which we launched last year, is called Toontastic. It's a storytelling and animation tool. We call it a, a creative learning tool for the iPad. It enables kids to draw and animate and narrate their own cartoons and then share them online with friends and family around the world. Um, Toontastic, uh, it's kind of like a, a big digital uh, puppet theater, if, if you want to think of it that way. And it's done really well. Uh, kids are creating 300,000 cartoons every single month on Toontastic. And last year, the New York Times named it one of the top 10 iPad apps of 2011. We built the app in partnership with the School of Education at Stanford and the Children's Creativity Museum up in San Francisco to bridge the gap between creative play and creative writing. Uh, You tell stories through play, but you can never capture those stories. So we wanted to build toys and tools that have record buttons that enable kids to to share their ideas with other people. And uh, let me make sure the volume's up there. Um, and, uh, and when you create the cartoon, also to be able to upload it online uh, to our global storytelling network called ToonTube, because we believe that kids should be learning not just through social studies textbooks, but through the stories of other kids just like them all around the world. Here are a couple of our, our favorite cartoons that have gone up in the last uh, year or so. The dragon and the prince are going to one of the things that we love about Toontastic is it's what the toy industry would call a grow with me toy. So it's simple enough for a five-year-old to create an animation, but it's also powerful enough for a 12-year-old to build their own mini TV network. And so you can see the range of content here as the kids get a little bit older, starting with our classic toys and then drawing their own, making them all the way up to Nickelodeon clones. But this funny thing happens when kids turn about 13. We see this drop serendipitous drop in cartoons being created. And at first, we kind of wrote it off. And we said, well, you know, teenagers, just, they're just a little too cool for our play. And they're just a little too cool for storytelling. And then we started talking to them. And we learned something. We learned that, that teenagers, the 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, they're not too cool for play. They're actually really excited about play. And they're not too cool for storytelling. It's just that their, their storytelling takes a different format. They're not stories in the traditional sense. They're messages. And the characters that they use in their stories aren't pirates and princesses like we were offering. They're actually their friends. So we decided to build an entirely new app. (laughs) And we're launching it next week. It's called MonkeyGram. And it's a messaging platform for uh, teenagers and and kids at heart, like all of you in the room, uh, to create and share your own cartoons uh, in the form of messages and send them out directly via Facebook, via Twitter, text message, and email. I'm going to back it up for a second here, and I'm going to give you a quick demo. 
So actually, can I ask one of you guys to come up and uh, make a cartoon of me? Is that cool? Yeah, please. Here, you can have this seat. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to pick our postcard. So we got some postcard, we got some cowboys, and a uh, road trip, and uh, no. no, we don't. Uh, zombies, how do you feel about zombies? Good. Good, good stuff. All right, so after we get our postcard, we're going to select a greeting for our postcard. World's best dad? No, probably not. How about brains? Does that sound about right? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so now we got a bunch of characters here. We can kind of move them around on screen, just like you would like an action figure or something like that. So you can kind of do that, and you can move your arms and stuff, and you can move this one. You want to try to move one of the characters? I'll get this guy. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. All right. So we're actually gonna make this guy a little more fun here. Give me a good face. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Nice. All right. So we got a giant zombie slayer here, and then I'm going to be a zombie, and then this one's going to be like a flying vampire or something <laughs> like that. All right, sound good? Now we're going to hit the start button here, and we're, it's going to record everything that we do. Okay, just like moving the characters around, it's going to record our voice. Have at it. Tell your story. Uh, Come on, you can be louder than that. Uh, ah, ah, brains! <laughs> What is it? How can I help you? This guy, please. <laughs> Welcome to Monkey Graham. All right, let's stop there. Those are some good sound effects. Nice work. <laughs> All right, so our next step after we've uh, made the animation is we're going to pick some music. And we have all sorts of different types of music to go with. Mystery, you think that's a good fit? Mm. Birthday, it's kind of boring, right? Fairy tale, comedy, mm. drama. How about thriller? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, and then we're going to flip it over and we can like type in our own message there or we can use the one that's already there. Mmm, brains. And for time's sake, they're going to have a timer here. They've got a big hook. They're going to pull me off, so we'll just use that one. Uh, and then we could post it up online. We could send it on text message, email, and that sort of stuff. Cool. Thanks a lot, Martin. Good cartooning. <laughs> so that's Monkey Graham. Uh, it'll be live next week. We're pretty excited about it. Uh, the reason we built Monkey Graham is that kids, teenagers specifically, are, spending, are sending 22,000 text messages every single year. That's 10 days of their life a year that they're spending text messaging. That's 10 days of creative writing opportunity that we're absolutely squandering with emoticons and LOL and OMG and all sorts of ridiculous there. And so we wanted to bridge that. We wanted to provide a tool that enabled kids to write creatively and create cartoons uh, and share their, share their stories through play. And so with MonkeyGram, uh, we're offering this wonderful mes messaging platform for all of you kids at heart. Uh, to create and share your own cartoons and post them up online, to take back those 10 days of, uh, of texting and hopefully spark a little animation, spark a little humor, spark a little playfulness uh, in all of your stories. And uh, again, we're, we're launching it next week. We're really excited to see what happens. Uh, well, if I back it up a little bit, the, our lesson there was that, that teenagers aren't too cool for play, that they're not too cool for storytelling. It's just that their storytelling takes a very different format. Got it. Thank you. All right, very good. What do you guys think of Monkey Graham? Well, what did you think of Monkey Graham? Come on up for again, again. Let me talk to you. Come on. Seriously, what did you think, Martin? It's fun. Is that something you would actually use? Yes. And uh, who would you send a message to? I don't know. <laughs> How much would you pay for it? Ten dollars. Ten dollars, pretty good. Whoa. You got to raise your prices. <laughs> awesome, well done. Okay, good job. All right, what do you guys think of um, this creative storytelling? I mean, I, I felt like it was, I, I didn't think there was much difference between Monkey Graham and the previous version. Is it just that it's shorter and quicker to do? So Toontastic is a 10-minute creation experience where you're building uh, a story arc, if you will. So you start with the setup, the conflict, the climax, the resolution. And this is how many minutes? Like? And Well, it's, it's not just that. It's you upload it up to a network with Toontastic, and you share your stories with all the kids. MonkeyGram is a personal communication. You, you make it on your phone. You make it in a minute. You send it off to your best friend. It's a playful storytelling tool meets Instagram. Got it. 
Yeah, I love, you guys I love it. My kids play with uh, Toontastic, and so g great job. Uh, one use case that you might consider is for the parents out there who uh, try and get their kids to sang, send thank you notes to grandma or grandpa. Um, this would be ah, a very good way. idea. We, we use Toontastic for that as oh, well. Nice. To say, tell grandma That's what you like idea. about the thing. Or, so this would be just spot on because it's much quicker to do, and they can say something personal. Awesome. I, I, uh, I'm not sure I buy the monkey gram thing uh, <laughs> personally, but I, I think I'm just, I'm just too old. Uh, I, I think, it, to me, text messaging is... is too old, no doubt about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Too old to play? I am too old to play. I, in fact, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grouch. No, uh, do you think, the, what do you think? The 13-year-olds are still, it's too, fo it's too comical from I, text I, messaging? I, I, not serious enough? I, I think it's, it may, I cannot, hopefully I'm wrong. It just, to me, felt like a little, a little too kitty and not... Um, and it would take too long to get across an LOL like we see a lot of today. But, mm. but hopefully I'm completely... Have you met 13-year-olds nowadays? What are you asking <laughs> me? I, they, I think they, they, They're playing <laughs> World of Warcraft. <laughs> True. They, they, I mean, they but I don't think it's that... I think that there's a gap... Be, well, we're not the right audience. I mean, there's, a, there's yeah, someone who has yeah, a question. Yeah, why don't we ask yeah, the kids? Right. Yes, go, 13. You, oh, yeah. You tell Hold us 13 year old. Can you pass it uh, back? Or have a vote as well. Uh, I'm 12. I don't know. Um, right there? I was wondering... Is it possible to like put in like music from different MP3 files or do custom fonts and messages for MonkeyGram or is it just a set thing? Uh, not yet, but it's certainly something we're looking into. Oh. Do you like it? Comparative? Would you use it? Uh, I definitely would. He says he definitely would use it. How about a show of hands from the kids who are in the target range? With the kids, how many of you guys and gals? Would 12 use it? to 15, who would use it? Yeah. Okay. I'm raising my hand, but that's yeah. it. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Um, so you must have tested this um, every week. What's that? Every week. Yeah. And so, what's the reaction? Are, are we correct in looking at it and saying, "Wow, it looks so kitty," but is it just right? And how do you get that right as a as a company building apps? How do you get the tone right in terms of the illustration? Uh, so I guess this will be lesson number two for us, and. Uh, and it sounds a little sadistic, but uh, we actually we give it to the kids or the teenagers in this case uh, for about the right amount of time that we expect it's going to be a full completed experience, and then we, we pull it away right there at the end. Oh. And uh, <laughs> if the kids uh, are clamoring for it and want it back, then uh, we know we can ship it and we're ready to go. If they're kind of like, eh, I'm not interested, then we know we got to go back a little and that get a little awesome. more work done. That is wow. awesome. You do that actually like in a lab, like in a conference room. You say, play with this for five minutes, and then we're so going to we take it away? A, we have an office up in San Francisco, and we positioned, positioned it halfway in between uh, a school and the Children's Creativity Museum. And on the weekends, we walk down to the museum and play with the kids. And on the weekdays, we go down to the school, and we test them in the classrooms. And you'll literally say, will you play with this for five minutes, and then say, after five minutes, OK, can I take it back? and then see how much they want it back. Sounds awful, huh? Yeah. Oh, by the way, when the, when a, uh, Good testing. with the question on the MP3s, when a CEO or founder says that's something we're considering, that means it's on the roadmap coming any day now. It's yeah. just a literal translation in business speak. Uh, any other feedback? Uh, MonkeyGram is cost money, or are they free? MonkeyGram is free as an app. Uh, you get a bunch of uh, postcards for free when you download the app. And then if you want, you can purchase more place or, uh, postcards. They're kind of like play sets, like yeah. you buy action figures or. So I can buy a theme if I want. Yeah. Oh, questions over here. Come on up. You, gotta, you guys got to come up here and so the audience can see you. Get your own tape. OK, don't worry about it. It's just an <laughs> iPhone. <laughs> One that I got a couple three. days ago. Um, if MonkeyGram is very successful, can you make like other features or Tell me other about playsets. What, do, what, do, what kind of postcards do you think we should throw on there? What do you mean? I don't know. What characters? Um, what kind of features do you want? Like vampires, werewolves. Vampires. Cool. Like, personally, can you make it for me? And <laughs> <laughs> You and only you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, I was saying if this is successful, are you going to make another app compare, like, Similar to it. Uh, so our our goal is is to build what we're calling. Uh, well, it sounds a little cliche, but we call it the Adobe Creative Suite for kids. Uh, so it's a, a suite of tools that enables you to create all sorts of different kinds of content. So we started with Toontastic, which is our animation tool, and then we said, "Wow, this is really cool!" And all these people want to play with it, but kind of want it for the phone and a shorter experience. So we built MonkeyGram, and then we got a couple more ideas for animation, and then we're going to move on to video and music and all sorts of stuff. Can you, um, is it on a, any like website on the computer, computer? It's not on the computer uh, yet because all of our apps are based on touch screens. Okay. So uh, until there's some really viable touch screens out there, we'll probably hold off on the computer. 
That's the way of him saying he's in Apple's secret NDA, <laughs> non-disclosure agreement, and he's making it for the new Apple ITV. <laughs> you know Apple's going to make a television, right? Don't listen to Jason. Did you hear that or no? Well, I would have leaked you, Jason, if you said Windows 8. Jason's <laughs> actually going to use it as a source me. to confirm. Your dad works at Apple? He doesn't work with, he doesn't work at Apple, but he works with Apple. Ooh. So your dad has inside Ooh. information? Really? Dude, <laughs> so All your dad is, what features does the iPhone 5 have? <laughs> yeah, what does the iPhone 5 does it look, look like? You, uh, what did your dad say about iPhone 5? Oh, he knows. I think it's a rectangle, triangle. Uh, triangle. <laughs> triangle. <laughs> You heard it here first. Swear? Okay, very good. All right. All right. This All right. Well done. Let's hear it for Monkey Excellent. Graham. Well done. Well done. Hey, we promise. Hello, everybody. It's Jason Calacanis, the host of This Week in Startups. One of the great things about having this program is that I get to pick the sponsors, and we only pick the sponsors based upon the products and services that myself or Tyler Crowley, my partner here, uh, use. And one of those products that I use all the time is MailChimp. That's how I send my email newsletter. As you guys know, two years ago, I quit blogging, started doing email, and that list grew to over 20,000 members. I needed a way to manage that massive list. I couldn't use this desktop software. I needed software as a service. I got MailChimp. Um, and one of the best features of MailChimp, I have it here on my screen uh, that I'll show you, is I can segment my list. So here is my list. I'm clicking the Segment button. And uh, here what I get that interface. It's just a beautiful interface. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a gorgeous interface. And I can say, hey, show me all the people who are, have been added to the list uh, after a specific date. So here I go. I say, hey, I want just the people who have signed up this month. And now I could segment and say, hey, just show me who signed up this month. Hey, here's the 81 people. Now I've got all the 81 people here. I, I hope, well, I can't show all their emails. But um, <laughs> I can just click the Send To button right here. And when I click that Send To button, now I'm just sending to those 81 people. This is called segmenting your list, which is a great thing to do. And you can segment it by location or any information that you collect from users or some information you don't collect. Uh, one interesting thing you could do is, and here's a list of all the different ways you can segment. By first name, by last name. I can email all the Tylers on the list by what company they're at, their job function, what they're interested in, because I ask people what they're interested in. So I can say, hey, if you're only interested in venture capital, I'm only going to email you about that, gender, location. Uh, but hey, look at that, CloudScore. Remember we had um, uh, Joe Marchese from CloudScore, and I could say, give me people who have a, a CloudScore <laughs> that is great. Fernandez, I think you mean. What's that? Joe Fernandez. Who did I say? Marchese. Oh, Joe Marchese is another entrepreneur. God, I'm sorry. I'm tired sometimes. Right. Uh, it's Joe. You, you just came back from New York just for this, huh? I just, is it back here? Yeah. So anyway, the cloud score is greater than 20. Boom. Uh, show me the people who are, you know, oh, that's 500 people. That's too much. Let me just make it 30 here. So show me the people who have cloud scores over 30. Boom. Here's the 360 people. I can just start emailing to just them. Um, so I could, if I wanted to give a free ticket, I can go all the way up the list. I can say, hey, well, over 40, over 50, over 70. Uh, who are the really powerful people here? on the list. And uh, boy, you know, I got the right people on the list. I don't want to show their emails. Um, but an incredibly powerful tool. Uh, go check it out. The free plan is always uh, free. And this is one of the nice things. They give, if you have a small list, like only 2,000 people or less, and you do under 12,000 emails a month, they do it free. And they just charge you as you go. You get these sort of MailChimp points. Um, and it's just an amazing product. So thank you to them for being a partner on the program. and. Thank you for uh, your attention to the sponsors. Without them, independent media like this trip to New York where we shot a bunch of great episodes would not be possible, uh, or the trips to San Francisco or to London. Um, it's a, it costs a lot of money to, to produce high-quality content like this in HD uh, and do it on a consistent basis. And without partners like MailChimp, we couldn't do it. Thank you, thank you, MailChimp. <laughs> MailChimp. you got, you got to go back. So I'd like you all to meet the adorable Christian and Kayla. They, like most girls their age, love Justin Bieber and absolutely hate Brussels sprouts. So Christian and Kayla's grandparents are coming up to visit soon, and they don't speak very much English. And Dad's been feeling guilty about this for a while now because the girls don't speak any Chinese. And when the grandparents come up, it's a really awkward quiet that's around the house. And he's worried if they don't teach the girls Chinese soon, grandma and grandpa are going to feel unwelcome and stop visiting as frequently. So he does what every good dad does. He pulls out his credit card and he signs them up for a Chinese school, hoping that they'd come home speaking some Chinese. 
And uh, instead, the girls actually came home with new high scores because they were busy playing Angry Birds on their iPads in class. So Dad's saying he knows that these girls love playing games on the iPad, and he knows that they need to learn Chinese. So that's why Dad put Penyo Pal, a fun new way for families to learn Mandarin and languages, onto Kayla's iPad. So you'll see here, when Kayla opens her iPad for the first time, she's actually able to customize her own Penyo Pal. And this pal is going to join her on a journey where she goes to Penyo World. And today she's going to explore Foodville, because next month's Grandpa's birthday dinner, and she wants to order in Chinese. So in Foodville, we can see we've got lots of different fun games and activities, and she actually wants to play her three favorite ones today. So the first one that she's going to play is called Food Frenzy, and Kayla loves this game because the funny graphics are in the corner. So you'll see the little grumpy chef. He just keeps getting more and more grumpy. And it's something that keeps her playing all the time. So uh, we're going to get you to tilt your heads this way to, <laughs> to look at the game. Um, we've got some tech there. But essentially what you can see is, uh, I'll shut up for a second so you can hear it. Awesome. It's actually kind of funny. From my vantage point, you're all going. <laughs> so uh, basically, you can see here that Kayla gets exposed to audio and pinyin and Chinese characters. And we've designed it at Penyopal to use spaced a repetition so that the way that Kayla sees these characters is best designed for her to learn in a fun and effective way, personalized to her Chinese ability. Another game that Kayla really loves to play is called Crazy Kitchen. And this game is fun because it uses what Kayla already knows best, how to swipe on the iPad. And it also teaches her a bunch of different verbs in a real life context. So we'll just show you this really quickly. And uh, hopefully this time we won't need you to tilt your head here. Um, OK, so maybe we will still need you to tilt your head. <laughs> so uh, here you can see that we're learning the word sa, which in Mandarin means shake. And, uh, you can't see Raph playing, but he basically goes like this, and it's all about using the iPad in a fun way to get kids to learn language. And the really coolest part that we really like here is that Kayla's actually able to, to play this game called the conversation game. So I'll just wait for uh, us to catch up here. OK. So here, this game is, uh, Kayla's usually pretty nervous about speaking Mandarin. She doesn't really have anyone to practice with, and she's a little bit shy. So that's where Penyo Pal really comes in. With Penyo Pal, she's got a private conversation buddy in her pocket anytime, anywhere. So today, Kayla's going to learn how to order food in Chinese from a Penyo Pal waiter. We'll get Kayla to demo here for us. 你好, so Kayla has two options. She can kind of hear, hear what they sound like. And when she's ready, she can try and record it herself. Yeah, so Kayla's mastered how to say thank you. And you can continue on with the conversation. It advances based on what you said. So it's all about giving Kayla the confidence to start speaking her Mandarin and using it right away. And that's what Panyupal offers. So uh, with just a few days before Grandpa's birthday dinner, Dad gets a little anxious. He logs on to the Penyo Pal parents dashboard, and he's able to see how many words Kayla's been able to learn, and he's so excited. He's also able to see which words Kayla might just need a little bit of last minute help on, so he can help her work through those together. And so Grandpa's birthday dinner was a great success. The girls were amazing. And uh, the smile on Grandpa's face when Kayla ordered her meal in Chinese is something Dad's always going to remember. So I'm really excited to be here today because we are the only Canadian startup to be launching here live. This is the first time Penyo Pal is going live. Um, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, as of two hours ago, it's actually in the App Store, so pull out your iPhones and your iPads. Please do download and let us know what you think. Um, and we're really excited because at Penyo Pal, on behalf of our entire team, we're uh, thrilled to be able to change the way that families can learn language together. So a short journey thus far in uh, Canada, we've come up with two main takeaways. The first is that cute is really powerful. So we designed with Krista and Kayla in mind, which is the young female uh, age group. But we've actually received a lot of user requests. We've got people who are requesting to test our game out who are of a much older demographic, from 12 to 18 to up to 25, both male and female. So our market's actually a lot bigger, thanks to cute graphics. 
who would have thought? <laughs> um, and second of all, it's important to be clear with educators. So when we set out, we actually are partnered right now with a number of top Mandarin teachers in Toronto and across Canada, but we kind of learned the hard way. So initially, a couple teachers thought we were trying to replace them and were a little bit apprehensive. So it's really important to maintain that clear channel of communication between the two. And so uh, you've seen a lot of startups today. These are just kind of the three things we really want to, you to remember. Uh, first of all, it's real life language. We're teaching you Mandarin in a bite-sized way. And most importantly, you've got a conversation buddy, a pen your pal in your pocket anytime, anywhere. Thank you. Well, Thank let's you. hear it for pen your pal. Very good, very good. I'm downloading it right now. Uh, what do you guys think? Thoughts on pen your pal? Have you tested this with kids? And, and how far along can they get to in a reasonable amount of time? That's what. Your, your uh, use case was to teach a kid to uh, order dinner. Yeah. Can they, how long would that take to get them to that point? So we're quite early, um, but we have tested with kids. And we're finding that even after just playing for 10, 15 minutes, they're able to start recognizing characters. So like they know that apple is pingua. Um, but we've, we're eager to start continue to test further and see uh, what. Does any, uh, do any of the kids here want to learn Chinese? Who wants to learn Chinese? Who hasn't gone yet? You haven't gone yet? Okay, so will you take him in the back for one hour? Okay. And then <laughs> will you come back and speak some Chinese? Is that okay? <laughs> 45 minutes, you'll do it? Yeah. 45 right. minutes yeah, or whatever. We'll Play it. with it for 45 minutes, and then by the end of this panel, come back and we'll see how you did. You tell us what you think of the program, okay? Okay, there you go. You have your first student. Sounds great. <laughs> and now you're terrorized, I know. Don't worry. It'll be fine. Okay, guys, what else did you think? I'd love to learn Chinese, but it's too childish for me. So uh, it was good stuff. What, what do you think, Jose, as a designer? I mean, for me, I would love to play that game and, and learn Korean and have it be fun and cartoony. Why, why did cartoons work so much better, do you think, Jose? M my first comment was that the art is great, so congratulations. Getting that is really hard, getting that right. Um, second, there's people in the audience that are doing similar things that I've also just randomly met or, or know. And, um, I think it's a great uh, market. Uh, I think that, and, and I want to apologize also to the parents for my explicit, uh, explicit of earlier too, I, I, I re realize that. For you, it might not be appropriate, but for the kids, this is know, super I powerful. I, I, I personally I'm, I'm would, pro I would probably use it, but I'm, I'm 12. Um, <laughs> I, I think it, it, it's a huge market across other languages, Spanish, uh, you name it, Chinese, those are the two next dominant languages of the new century. Uh, so I'm really excited, and you guys did a great job. I think you had some technical problems with the, 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 the right way on the iPad. Yeah. <laughs> and the metaphor. So, so I give you a 9 uh, out of 10, and the only reason I don't give you a, a, a 10 is because I think you could do better. Okay. Just a little bit. How? How? I'm, I'm being a Chinese mom. Um, <laughs> Uh, Tiger so first I say you a bad are, word just, in front of kids. Fire today. Now I'm racist. <laughs> and say, Jason, never invite me Tiger back. Mo Tiger mom is an acceptable term. We all know what it is. Yes. Okay. Please. On Twitter, vote do not invite. <laughs> um, okay. I, I would improve it. a little bit of depth and a little bit of um, uh, flat is good and, and really 3D is not great, I think. But texture and like, the, just, like just one level deeper into the aesthetics of it. Um, there's a lot of games that do that, like Cut the Rope does that really well. Mm -hmm. It's flat, but it has a little tiny bit of texture, and it could be the monitors, too. But. Awesome. Robert, what do you think? I liked it. I, you know, I, I, I went back to German class when my parents tried to get me to learn German, and I, it was drudgery because it wasn't fun like this, and I, I'd like to try it and see if, if I can... Uh, Learn a language. I want to see what the kid does. For yeah, I'm yeah, that'd be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious. I, how, <laughs> so you you you, you uh, were matching the the verbal uh, utterance that you gave back to something else. How sophisticated is that matching? How good is it? Was it is it listening just for just the tonal match? Is it listening for? Is that your core IP right there? Um, so the sound matching. Yeah. So we're using some open source and some proprietary components. Oh, hello. Um, so we're using some open source and some proprietary components uh, for that one there. Um, it's not doing tonal matching just yet. Okay. So like, I can, like, w the, so the you, point you, with this product... You could call me a horse accidentally, and, then, and, and it wouldn't actually <laughs> detect that right now. Um, well, I mean, it, 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 it tries to find the closest words that you might have said. Ah. Um, we wanted to, the one we built here really is just meant to get you comfortable with speaking. And you yeah. do get better just by having to hear it multiple sure, times sure, and sure. say it multiple times. Um, but the tech, the underlying tech, we're now working on to get it to evaluate you. On and tonal match you. as well, yeah. which is and really important, obviously. In are you going language. up against like Rosetta Stone? And yeah, does yeah. Rosetta Stone have a yeah, microphone they do. version? They do. Yeah, yeah. So that's five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. What are you retailing this for? 
What uh, will the cost be eventually? The, every, like, the basics are free, and then you can add, buy additional content at like 99 cents a piece. Cool. So, so the language, short Rosetta Stone. the learning language market is really crowded, right? Really mm -hmm. crowded. What I didn't really see anything besides the auditory stuff that set you apart from the others that I've seen. Uh, and I have looked into the uh, the difficulties of doing the auditory stuff. Are you doing that locally, or is that sending it back up to the cloud? It's a really tough problem for kids, right? The language models are tough. So that right now is doing everything locally. Because we kind of, if, if we know what you're trying to say, then, you can, then the device can, can, yeah. can do that evaluation locally. Uh, on the tech side, if you're trying to be like Dragon where you're trying to figure out out of the blue what is someone trying to say, that you need the power of the cloud to do. Well, you so. pick the exactly most difficult language to pull this off in, right? Mandarin with tonal. I mean, maybe you should do it. Tried Cantonese with nine tones, right? So <laughs> maybe make it a little harder, but yeah. I mean, I, I like language things, so you could extend it easily to other languages. Um, That's the plan. I would encourage you to do that. Yeah, yeah I was going to ask the same thing. Like, what is it that really differentiates you? Um, and just for disclosure, like, we, in, you guys are probably familiar with Mind Snacks, maybe, so it's an investment that we made. But, um, but yeah, what is it that you think makes you guys defensible? Um, so for us, what we really target on is kids. We really want to focus on providing that immersion also with the learning. So rather than just only discrete ways of learning, which I think is what a lot of competitors like MindSnacks and a couple others do, we want to also have that immersion piece. And that's what we really feel the conversation offers. Mm -hmm. okay. It's such a huge market. I wouldn't worry about competition at this stage. Just pick a niche and just you know, do your best in it. Uh, there, not I also love it. the dashboard and the, you know, um, for parents, so does a parent get some sort of an email alert, or do I have to go into the app to see that? I mean, for me, it'd be great when London, who's two and a half, you know, uh, if it emailed me just every day or you know every time she used the app, yeah. and just sent me a little status report, so when I came home, I could catch up with her yeah. and then try to learn some of the Korean phrases. Yeah, and that's the great oh. part, Jason. You can set it so that you get a daily email, or you can check it just whenever you feel like it. Oh, so you can get an yeah. email sent to dad or yeah. mom. Whatever dad or mom. Yeah, prefers. I mean, I think that's the killer piece right there. Um, okay. Is there a competition piece to this where you could have two kids competing? I, I, we definitely are thinking on the viral front. We're actually getting a lot of feedback to also have parents in, on the game too, so parents can learn Mandarin alongside their children. So uh, it's something we're also uh, looking into expanding sort into. Sort of like the Fitbit kind of competition game? I love the yeah. idea of, yeah, competition with Healthy mom and dad. Rivalry. So we challenge... My daughter and I, you know, my wife, who is Korean, who speaks Korean, could challenge my daughter and I to learn X amount, and each night we could practice at dinner. That would be a super, you know, fun, um, you know, feature. I, I like the competitive issue, and I'll add to that that in, in Hispanic communities, one of the challenges is that we're losing our language, um, and the kids sometimes just don't think it's cool enough to do it. Um, and it's kind of upsetting to some of the older generation, and it would be great to be able to participate. You're not going to you know, listen to your parents about it, but you might do it there. Yeah, on the competitive note, one of the, I guess, another learning that we found was, like, well, you guys are all guys, <laughs> and boys, boys tend to like competition a lot. They go for the numbers. Um, when we've been testing with girls, that's not what they look for. Mm -hmm. And so just like in terms of anyone else designing games, you have to realize that they're, they're two very different kind of audiences. What do you find the, the girls like best? You like shopping. <laughs> and, uh, customization and character and could, story. Could it well. just be that you're Canadian, though, too, and you're less competitive? <laughs> That's quite sexist, that, actually. That, that, wow. That was, that was for you. Jose. That, that, that was for you. That was for you. <laughs> Man. Wow. I'm in the right. middle on this one. <laughs> for once, Robert, you're not the one saying something. Uh, That's I, totally I, offensive. I'm it's, like, now I'm going to awesome. have to come up with something uh, the, during the next demo. Right. <laughs> uh, very well done. Uh, everybody download the app. Thank you. And, uh, hundreds of iPads as part of their one-to-one -one program. <laughs> and Joe's class received uh, 30 iPads. Uh, and Joe is uh, certainly very happy and intrigued about how to use this technology in the classroom. But he's a little bit anxious as well. His issues are around, he's seen many cool math apps, but those apps are not uh, <clears throat> in line with his lesson plan do not allow him to push his own content. And most importantly, he doesn't know what the students are doing. They could be in Facebook, or they could be somewhere else uh, playing with the iPad. So he's really anxious about that, until one day he meets Nearpod. And Nearpod is this amazing mobile platform 
that allows teachers like Joe to create his own mobile lessons, to engage students in a synchronous way as I'm doing now with you as I'm pushing content, and get instant feedback and post-session reports. It's really powerful and Joe wants to give it a try. So he goes to the Apple Store and he downloads for free both the teacher app, which is what I have here, and I'm going to show you a bit later, and the student app, which is what you guys have and you're following my presentation. So he creates a, an account, and the first thing he needs to do is he needs to create a presentation, right? So in a very simple way, he, um, upload, he goes to the online content tool that Nearport created. He uploads his existing PowerPoint and Keynote presentations and add interactivities. Interactivities such as um, Q and A's, quizzes, videos, drawing activities. It's very simple and in a few minutes Joe has his presentation. So let's see what he did. So first he's conveying content. He's explaining how to solve for x in a simple equation. He's just, just pushing content. But now the fun part comes when he can actually engage the classroom and I would ask you please to respond to me with, um, I have 25 of you logged in here, answering the question on your iPads. And there are a couple of very interesting things happening. Could you show that? So a couple of things happening here. One is, this is not two or three people participating as in the usual class. We have everybody participating here. Almost everyone has answered. That's one thing. Second thing, Joe knows how the class is doing, whether people are understanding what he's teaching. So he can share with everyone um, the aggregated results. So as you can see in your iPads, now you got the aggregated results. Um, so this is pretty neat. Now Joe knows that people are understanding, and I ha as I have 75% of correct answers. <clears throat> Not only that, but Joe can ask students to actually go through the process of solving this equation. So I would ask you to please quickly try to solve that equation and uh, drawing on your iPad and pushing that back to me. And I will start receiving your answers and being able to share back uh, with you to illustrate some of the main points. So I'm going to cut some of you off when, when I start receiving them. So for example, I'm going to take this. I know who's doing it, but I'm not going to share that. But I can push this to everyone, right, um, to illustrate some of the common mistakes and good practices that students do. Um, then Joe decides to really go into explaining how is the right process to do that. And this is a very interesting feature. I've just now pushed video to all of you at the same time. So you're watching a video of how to solve this equation. I took the sound out just so it, it, it really works in an environment like this. But Joe has the ability to push content to everyone at the same time as well. And finally, <clears throat> Joe is going to go for a quiz to really get the level of understanding. So this is another interesting feature, as now you're going to be able to go at your own pace. So if you can go ahead and start answering the three quick and simple questions, we'll be able to see on, on my teacher app, it's, it's there, uh, how uh, each one is progressing. And I can control not only, I can see where each one of you is, is at any point in time and whether you're answer, answering correctly or incorrectly. This is a huge advantage for Joe as this saves a lot of time in grading. And he also can adjust his teaching based on the level of understanding of the class. Many teachers are using this as an exit ticket before the class ends. Um, here I can see that 75% of you answer correctly. There are some people that are still going in, they're in question one. Some of you have finished. And again, as before here, I can share with you the, all, the aggregated results and your results. So I have 75% of correct answers, but each of you got your own pie chart with the answers that, um, based on your performance in the quiz. Up to now, we talked about Joe using his own presentation. Nearport has just released a store where Joe is gonna be able to 
in the future, share presentations, uh, and um, buy from uh, publishers or other, um, and other teachers. Really quickly, in terms of the lessons learned, the first one is based on talking to teachers daily. Um, the majority of them are not ready to flip the classroom. Khan Academy has a lot of hype, and we believe it's going to continue to grow. But the lecture is not going anywhere, and teachers will continue to exist. Second lesson, um, iPads are here. Mobile is happening. We took daily to schools. iPad is in almost every technology coordinator agenda. Uh, so we thought we were really early, and uh, we're not. Uh, this is happening right now. OK, let's hear it for Nearpod. Well done. Thank OK. I think it was clear what was going on, right? The iPods were being controlled and everything. So really complicated presentation, but really well executed. So well done on that. And so we have a terrible question. We, we lost the presentation. Did you know that we lost the presentation? So in other words, th this, is, this is kind of one of the challenges. So actually, I should say I love this technology. I think, yep. that, I think there's a lot of power in this. And I think that, but that iPad keeping, lost the connection? keeping teachers yeah. in charge of some of the things that are going on in the classroom is really, really interesting. But you dropped us out, right? And so we started like just hanging out and doing nothing over here. <laughs> yeah. So how? But you're not back in, right? You're we're now back, back in, but we never got to take the quiz. The quiz yeah. Okay. Huh. We might have failed. Does but, it give you an alert that somebody yes, dropped off? Yes, I have an you, alert. I have you, an alert here. Okay, so do you know that? What happens? Talk a little bit about how robust. So the point was made earlier that you know technology has to really work in classrooms because when you lose us, we're going to disrupt the class. Uh, so talk a little bit about how robust this is, how what happens when someone drops off, and you know. Yeah. Uh, Basically, Good. how did you know that they dropped off? Answer yes, I, I knew that there are some people who dropped off. Uh, they are in red in my attendance sheet here. Um, so you could have just said, "Okay, hold on a second. We're going to wait for Betsy." And yeah, but then I saw you that get you were off of Facebook. Sort of yeah, telling you wanted me to, to hurry up. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> the reality is that teachers, when they teach, and we see daily uh, as we go and in, 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 in our personal classes, they don't go like slide like I went today. <laughs> this was a quick presentation. In I, I was targeting three yeah. minutes. So there was a lot of content. Uh, this, like, the network comes back, and you would have, you probably were lost for ten seconds or five seconds, and then it recovers and it just puts you wherever so you need to. So that was a network problem rather than a near problem. Oh yes, problem. yeah, yeah. yeah hey, so, David, you were. Uh, that point is very important because we've seen this in a lot of technology deployment. Right into the microphone. Technology, oh, sorry, we've seen this in a lot of technology deployment. When technology um, gets in the way, teachers walk away. If right. whenever. Right. But, they, but he said you did notice it. Yes. And in, if you were an actual teacher, you would have stopped and gotten them on. So you've actually built that safeguard in. Yes. To be clear. Okay. But you were nodding the whole time when you were watching this, I noticed. You really like this, I think. I do. Absolutely. Is this something no would uh, buy this company? Or is this something that like, <laughs> no would like, really want to have this technology or license it? My, or is yeah. this on your roadmap? I mean, I, so so you know. the idea of classroom management systems are meaningful. This is, you know, literally a microcosm of a, of a classroom management system. Yeah. You're competing with Intel. You're competing with a lot of people who are trying to do full classroom management systems. So that's something to think about. You are also a content provider, right? So well, we try to be content agnostic. And we have a content tool where teachers can create their own content. And publishers will come into the game in the future. We're striking some alliances. Yeah, I just think you need to look at all the content, the classroom management systems that all of the platform guys yeah. know they need in K-12. Yeah. One thing that, that we see today, David, is that a lot of iPads are going to schools, and teachers and technology people get their iPads and say, what do I do now? Yep. Because it's so just it's about individual apps. No, absolutely. So we feel that uh, this provides, and we're hearing from them build, every day. Build this a better is, one, and, and Intel will buy you. Yeah. Joe, what do you think, um, as a teacher? <clears throat> we have 280 um, iPads piloted right now. And I would love to load this on it. So it's, yeah. I uh, literally have a, like a requisition waiting to sign up. How much does it cost? Wow. How much would it cost? It's Joe is 250 it's, iPads. It's a freemium model. Freemium? Freemium. It's so when, free. he do, when he does pay, what does he pay? Yeah. And what does he get for paying? Well, he's going to get some, as a school, some admin features. Uh -huh. uh, and how much? It's, it we haven't teacher? defined that yet. Right. It's, it's per teacher. Uh, it's going to start around $5 per teacher per month. It's really affordable. Yeah. And, nice. uh, so fifty dollars a year for a teacher or something. Wow. So that's really affordable. Aiden. Uh, well, 
I, I want to shift gears here. First of all, I, I wanted to commend you for leading with product. I like the fact. And also, can I ask a favor? When we're having these teachers and other characters, can we please know if they're fict fictional or real? We, we just made that I think note. That, would be, <laughs> that, that was would a be real really teacher. No, this this is a true story. Just, just, I, oh, perfect. Yeah. Just a side note, though. I really love the fact that you, you, you led with the product. I love the fact that there's a data layer. You got us all involved. I didn't type my real name. I was AS, and I'm glad that I scored perfectly. It was a great <laughs> validation. We should say the judges that scored the highest should go first or have more time for comments. Um, I also like the fact that uh, behavior change is really difficult, and you're not trying to completely disrupt the classroom. Instead, you're saying, look, iPads are really popular. And I think one of the things that, I'm not a teacher, but if I were a teacher and somebody said, use this tool, now your uh, grading and evaluation is automated, you save time, so you can actually use your time to bring up the students that are not doing well. I like that aspect of it. Obviously, the teacher should, should be the final authority on that. So I, I was, in general, uh, more any, bullish any than some of my feedback? counterparts. Any, uh, okay, you. will you pass this back to one of our sure. esteemed teachers? I have a question about differentiation. So if there's a kid that gets the problem done really quickly, do they just sit and wait for the rest of the class to catch up? Well, some of the best practices we, we convey to teachers is that they do longer quizzes. So some of the students will get to the third or fourth question, and some of them will get further away. Um, today, the capability of pushing differentiated content to different students, it's, it's not ready, but it's in, certainly it's in the pipeline. And um, given the traction we're having, we're, we're going to build that pretty soon. Um, I have a question about a, a different use. Um, I have an edge tech company, but I also teach part-time as an adjunct professor, and 70% of all professors are adjuncts. Could, have you developed this for college and community college teaching at all? Well, we see a lot of applications uh, from K to 12 to higher ed. Uh, it's, it's both for the classroom and for distance learning, as this works over the internet, so anyone could have followed this presentation from anywhere. So we don't have a preference in terms of who can use so this could platform. work for distance education as well? For sure. David, does. what do you think? I, I scored at the highest presentation because uh, it was great how you led with the product, as uh, Aiden said. And if you look back even, I guess, 10 or 15 years, at MBA classes, you had the little buttons where you could have the little light on how people were voting. And obviously, here we are uh, with uh, much better technology. And so I think getting kids involved in the lesson uh, is tremendous, so I think great job.